Good morning. David Paul here. Really got the jungle sound going here um, with that bird, which every time I try to make a video of this situation, he shuts up. Never mind. Hopefully you'll, you'll join us in a minute. Um, I thought I might make a video about this because this is an interesting idea. Um, this, the, the land that we're using here, one of them is what I call Scotland, but the rest of them are all owned by the children of Pedro and uh, Bartholomew Rojas, now deceased. And they're split up into 10 lots, and one of them I own because my ex-wife has given it to me, which is held in the name of Beatrice and Crisanta, our two daughters, because I can't own land. So one of these pieces of land, which is not being used by this uh, child of, the, a child of uh, passed down to the daughter of one of their daughters, is not really doing anything, it's standing idle. Unfortunately, what they did in the past is they planted some of these things, these beautiful things with the big leaves. And they are teak trees. Now, any woodworker, these things are non-native to the Philippines. They shouldn't be here. They're not contributing anything to the ecosphere at all. So if you were to chop them down, it wouldn't hurt anything. Um, so feel free, you know. So I thought to myself, oh my God, this is, this is the thing of dreams of carpenters. There's the one over there. There's the one there. That's two. That's three. There's a four at the back there. Um, let's see what else we got. Five, six, seven, uh, possibly eight, nine. Oh my God, there's more than I thought. And this is the big baby, number 10. Number 10 here. Look at that gorgeous thing. And next to it is a useless mahogany tree which should be burnt to hell, you know. There's at least 10 here I've counted and I may be making an error in my counting. They're not making money because they make money when you chop them down. So what we can do with these is chop them right down to the base and then set up what you call diasugi where they grow back again uh, because I think they're worth it and uh, let them regrow from a shoot and that's for the next 20 years of, uh, you know, making some money. So where do I come in on this? Well, I asked about, could I buy these? And yes, you can. Now, normally, these are the things of dreams. You couldn't get them. And even if I, oh, there's, num there's number, I said 11, I think that's number 12. Uh, not sure about that one. It looks, that doesn't know. Yes, it is. Number 12, which is a spindly little thing. Um, so, <clears throat> any more? Dear God, there's more down the lane. Oh my God, there's so much of this stuff. And I have some on my land as well. So I was told that you, they were expensive. They're going to cost you three times as much as a normal tree, which is going to cost you a thousand pesos a normal tree. These things are going to cost me three thousand pesos. I look at the situation and what it would cost me to buy that stuff in the West. And it's just outrageously cheap. But the difficulty is, is that what you got to do is you got to get that to the West. So that puts shipping costs and all sorts on top. And then it all of a sudden becomes impossible. But of course, you know, I'm partly living here in the Philippines. And uh, it's not a question of shipping things around. It's here. The abundance is here. So how do I get out of this problem? Or rather, how do I benefit from this? Because they're not doing uh, any good to the land by not generating money. Um, so I'm going to see this or speak to this daughter and arrange to buy these trees. Because I woke up this morning 
with a brilliant idea. As Baldrick would say, I have, an, I have a cunning plan, and I do, and this is the plan. What I need to do is I need to cut the trees down, buy them, cut them down, get them milled up into lumber, put them into storage somewhere, and keep them in storage until such time as I choose to use them um, for whatever project I want to do. Well, this is crazy, isn't it? Because, like, where am I going to find the storage and then somebody use it and or whatever? A million things can go wrong with this crazy idea. So I woke up this morning and I thought, ping, great idea. This is the answer. What I do is I need on my house, I need to clad the walls, the exterior and the interior. Well, let's not concern ourselves about the exterior, but the interior. So if I chop these down, mill them into boards and line the interior of the house with teak, I'm going to end up with the most staggeringly uh, rich house you can imagine, you know. You, you, apart from building your house out of gold or something, you know. So the interior of the house, the ceiling, the floor and the walls are all lined with this stuff. Then what? Then that's it, get on with it, live in it. And then <clears throat> the intention is, is that a boat will be built. I will build a boat or direct people how they're going to build it in memory of uh, these two people, Pedro and, Ro and Barth Bartolomeo Rojas. And it's probably going to get called Pedro and Bartolomeo. Now, that, the, the, we have to do some tests yet on the uh, banana fibre, but that's supposed to be done with banana fibre. Not abaca, banana fibre, the fine stuff, as an alternative to glass fibre. So that's the next job to do. Now, that can be done in Portugal uh, because I have unlimited time Nothing to do when I get to Portugal other than fix that house up, which once it's fixed, it's done. Uh, and a lot of that house is can, uh, now is, is a question of leaving things alone. Um, the, the less I do with that house, the more I seem to like it. The, the stonework I was going to plaster initially, I'm not going to do that now. I was going to point all the walls in between. I'm not going to do that either. I'm going to leave the character of the gaps in the walls so there's a lot of a lot of uh, work that I just don't have to do so once that boat is built I can bring it down here I have somebody a sailor though he doesn't know it yet uh, as well as myself if I care to join him uh, sail that boat down here with no interior so basically the the interior of the boat is probably just basically the frames and everything are constructed out of any old crap that's not going to be durable but doesn't matter because when it arrives here it's going to be made out of teak so all the interior stuff will be replaced by teak and in, in Portugal that can be framed up using uh, using eucalyptus wood which is which is good stuff in itself it's probably stronger than the teak and uh, arrive here, fit the boat out at your leisure, and then uh, then you're laughing. Now, problems I've had with boats in the past, and here we are on a road. This is the road, which you go over that land there, and that gets to Scotland. And it's not too hilly. It's not too bad. Um, and then you hit this road, and then you take a left. You take a another left and another and a right and then that takes you down to the beach and uh, I was taken down there to meet this woman last night that seemed to want to team me up with her but I'm quite happy with Julie um, and she said that the beach was just down there and I thought ping that's the answer to expensive uh, marina charges and also the answer to security here and everything basically what I need to do is get the boat out of the water bring her up here up this road up here to Scotland and just park the boat on my own land 
until such time as I choose to come back. Now, in this, on this island, there's an enormous truck which could just, it would tow that boat along as if it was an ice cream cone or something. It wouldn't even know it was there. So all I need is a trailer to, t to carry the boat, bring the boat down here, and uh, I'll, I'll put in some sort of clear roadway there, uh, just basic, basically not having trees in the way. Get the boat down to here, which you could just lower the boat down, or you could even store the boat up there, or I'm sure my sister-in-law Nita would let me keep my boat just on the edge of her land here, uh, or anywhere, you know, or even this piece of land here. Lots of scope there. Uh, bring the boat up, take her back to the sea, put her in the sea, and now take her to the the dock down at uh, uh, Santa Ana in Tallycud and leave her there. So now I have a, a boat available for me to do sailing in and have a fun time and go anywhere I like in the Philippines for four months. And then when you're finished, bring her back home bring her back out of the sea, take her up there and moor her up there. Now, the, the cost of this, it doesn't matter a damn because if you think about it, you're only doing it twice, a trip to the beach and a trip from the beach twice a year. Uh, one, well, once a year, one double trip per year. If they charged me 10,000 pesos, which is quite a lot of money around here, that would be peanuts spread over a year. And uh, one way or another, I could recover the cost by possibly not living in my house and renting it out on Airbnb. and b I could have that money back in a few days. So each thing feeds into another. And that's that. I have my, uh, it's a matter of interest, I have the electric bill for last month arriving. And I'm, I'm a participant in this. Um, and it's... Uh, you know, I've been using tools and stuff like that and had the fan on more than they would have probably had it on. And uh, we've clocked up 1,500 pesos, which is basically amounts to um, something like a pound a day, a UK pound a day. I'll have to redo that calculation. Yeah, I think it is. 68 pesos or 68 pence or something. In other words, it's nothing. And that's me being here. So if I choose to get the electric on, I am told that there is a standing charge for having the electricity on. And the cost of the standing charge is 300 pesos, which is 10 pesos a day, which is 14 pence a day. And uh, it makes you wonder why I'm busting my ass trying to do solar things. So maybe the solar stuff has got to be done in Portugal. And that's that. So there you go. That's Tectona Grandus, Grandus. And it's, um, it's all mine, all mine. Just got to cough the dosh. Jesus be with you. <laughs>